please don't take him out of our lives forever. Uh, I know that I've died and not be able to spend time with him sometime before I go. Nobody gives a fuck if you're crying. You told you stabbed this girl 114 times. When officers went into the home, they found a pair of wet jeans in Fuchi's bedroom. How and the as we were fuck did they get the in-home CCTV footage? Aiden would often talk about how he would murder his hypothetical victims. He suggested that he would take them into a wooded area at night, stab them, leave, and later claim he had nothing to do with the murders. When Dog, I am grinding right now. This is literally my fourth video in a row I'm recording. Like, I'm just, I'm doing too much. I'm, this is actually about to be my last one, I think. What's up? How's your day going? You feel me? Hope it's a nice day. I don't know when this is going to go up, so it could be raining. Could be a nice day. Whatever it is, hope you're enjoying it. I ain't gonna do too much talking. Let's get into this video. Leave a like uh, if you enjoy it without doing too much talking. Let's watch. You know, they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood, down our main street. This is parents. Is she good? No, no she's not. She's dead. That's why this is very important. It's all on you right now. This is my problem. You were the last, the last one, with one seen with her. So right now, it's a lot of, it's facing you right now, son. Why is it my problem, bro? You're going to jail. I don't care what nobody say. Why would you ask, is she good? You're guilty. This Tell is me, Aiden like, Fucci, a 14-year-old boy from Florida, being questioned by his parents at a police station in 2021. Aiden is being held and questioned under suspicion of murdering his 13-year-old classmate, Tristan Bailey, something he insists he had no part in. But to understand how police came to... Rest in peace to Tristan. This shit is so fucking... You're 14 years old. You don't just want to play Fortnite or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the 14, 15, 13 year olds do, but what the fuck are you killing your classmates for? Suspect Aiden was capable of murder. We must go back to the beginning. Beginning of what? In the quiet what, town of St. John's, Florida, about his Tristan Bailey was just a 13 year old girl attending Patriot oh, okay. Oaks Academy, dealing with all the usual challenges high school brings. She was a dedicated and talented cheerleader, full of enthusiasm, ambition, and determination, rarely seen among other kids her age. Her classmate- High school at 13? What's that, freshman? 13, 14. Damn, yeah. Aiden, however, was a freshman. different story. According to those who knew him, Aiden Fucci was an oddball. While his teachers noted that Aiden showed them respect and never outwardly caused trouble, his hatred of authority, arrogance, and know-it-all approach to life was off-putting for his teachers and classmates. Throughout his school life, Aiden would land himself regular suspensions, usually after getting into fights with his classmates. Well, at first, I didn't know if it was him or his friend that was in ISS, and that's why they were in ISS because one was... I assess his in-school suspension, if y'all ain't know. I've been in school suspension before. It's cool. It's just so fucking boring. And they want you to, like, write down some shit and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Like, fuck that, bro. And the other one said it. But the allegation was that Aiden threatened to throw another student out a window. That's correct. A female. What? Student. That's correct. Okay. But outside of school, Aiden was displaying far more red flags. Aiden had an unnatural obsession with murder, frequently discussing the topic with his friends. According to those who knew him, Aiden often talked about his deep desire to feel what it would be like to kill another human being. He has said he, like, he, he said. Ooh, hold on, what did that say? Knew him, Aiden often talked about his deep desire to feel what it would be like to kill another human being. Has anybody seen Tristan lately? This is just a kid being dumb. You know what I'm saying? That's all I can say. This is literally just a kid being fucking dumb. You're going to jail, he, buddy. He had like, said he, like he, he said, like, he, like, his knife, he wanted to, like, slit somebody's throat. You're going to jail, yeah, like, like he's bad. Satisfying. He's talked about killing people. 
He's talked about fighting people. I've seen him practice stabbing motions with his knife. Aidan would often talk about how he would murder his hypothetical victims. He suggested that he would take them into a wooded area at night, stab them, leave, and later claim he had nothing to do with the murders. When Can't being dumb, can't being like just can't being dumb. Like, what the fuck? He talked about killing somebody. He even told Zoffy Bowman how he would do it. And what he told her was, I would walk around at night and I would find somebody else walking at night. I would drag them in the woods and I would stab them. And then I would pretend like I didn't do it uh, so that I could keep killing people. In her sworn testimony, Aidan's girlfriend confirmed so that he had an unnatural people. obsession with the idea of killing, and often claimed to hear voices in his head encouraging him to murder someone. When he wasn't at school, Aidan would always carry a knife, one of two named Picker and Poker. On several Picker occasions, she said, Aidan would pretend to stab he her or sneak up behind her and hold one of these knives to her throat. Despite the blatant red flags he on his to to his girlfriend believed it was nothing more than teenage morbid curiosity. She never thought he would go through with it. That's going to be Sophie coming on the skateboard towards the house. Okay. On May 8th, 2021, the day the before fuck? Mother's Day, Aidan spent the day with his girlfriend and their friend Trey. The three spent the day skateboarding around the neighborhood, as they often did. Across town, Tristan was enjoying dinner with her family. When she returned home around midnight, Tristan's older sister saw her on a video chat with a boy in a baseball cap, who convinced her to come and hang out at Trey's house. Fuck. <sighs> This girl was 13. It looks dark as fuck outside. Why the fuck did her parents let her go by herself this dark at 13 years old? Like, I just don't fucking get it. It just, it will never After make sense. After an hour sense. together, Aiden and Tristan left Trey's house. Between 1.24 and 1.45 a.m., neighborhood surveillance cameras caught them walking toward a cul-de-sac at the end of the street. It was the last time Tristan would be seen alive. Wow. <laughs> Aiden took Tristan to a wooded area and stabbed her 114 times, killing her. before she could fight for her life. The murder happened precisely as he previously suggested. He took someone into the woods and stabbed them. In his mind, he had committed the perfect- And it wasn't even personal. He stabbed her over a hundred times to make sure she was dead. And it wasn't even personal. He just wanted to do it crime only he didn't you can see that he's carrying something in his hands at 3 27 a.m aiden ran back home barefoot holding his shoes when he eventually got home aiden got to work hiding the evidence in his room convinced that he had gotten away with murder the following morning mother's day 2021 Tristan's family made the horrifying discovery that their daughter and sister were missing. After exhausting all options, they contacted the authorities, who put out a missing persons report and began interviewing those who knew her. That list included the last person to see her alive, Aidan. Aidan's testimony to the authorities did not inspire confidence. His timeline didn't add up seemingly taking two hours to return home in what was at most a 30 minute walk. He suggested that Tristan had been hanging around with a 20-something drug dealer, a claim that nobody else backed up. And then, authorities received an email with an attachment. It was a Snapchat screenshot. 
In the back of the patrol car, Aidan took a selfie with a peace sign, adding a text banner that read, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? His classmates huh. shot back, reminding him that Aiden Wait, what was happened? What the fuck, Aiden, bro? Aren't you the one that got her into this mess? You were with her, Aiden. You know what happened to her. All right, this is why I hate people on the internet. Like, yeah, it's they the probably, one you probably fucking know, happened. but like, shut the fuck up. Like, y'all don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? But his sociopathic glee didn't end with just one post, as he openly implied that his victim was alive and staging this whole saga. We're, we're having fun in a f***ing cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Yep. Tristan, if you f***ing walk out the damn... When you see this in a month... Before police could obtain Aiden's cell phone, wow. a runner discovered the bloodied corpse of Tristan in the woods, the stab wounds visible. Wait. Aiden's cell phone... A f***ing cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Yep. Tristan, if you f***ing walk out the damn... When you see this in a month... Before police could obtain Aiden's cell phone, a runner discovered the bloodied corpse of Tristan in the woods, the stab wounds visible. Within an hour, police put out a search warrant for Aiden and brought him in for questioning, leaving him in a room with his parents. At this point, it's obvious just how much trouble Aiden is I can't is wait in. to hear what the fuck the parents about to say. But his refusal to even acknowledge it is chilling. What about to say? When reminded that his friend is dead, Aiden fails to see why he should care. You know, they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood. Down our main street. Is she good? No, no she's not. she's dead. That's why this is very important. It's all on you right now. This is my problem. You were the last, was the last one, with one seen with her. <laughs> so right now. Why did he okay. zoom in on her face? Like, is he... This is my problem. You were the last, was the last ah. one seen with her. So right now, it's a lot of it's facing you right now, son. At one point during the encounter, Aiden's parents press him to acknowledge just how serious the situation is, but he can't seem to see it. When they ask if he's scared, Aiden claims he isn't, despite his fidgety hand movements. Fidgety hand movements. Look at his chest. He's breathing hard as fuck. He's breathing hard. He's scared. Aiden's parents continue pressing him for his side of the story, but he remains totally unmoved, offering up vague answers through a disinterested mumble and frequently avoiding eye contact. Aiden admits that he kissed Tristan and did more with her, confirming his DNA is on her. And yet, wow. through it all, he shows seemingly no recognition of how damning that evidence could be. Liar. Later on, Aiden is again asked if there's anything that's still being hidden from his parents. While he insists there isn't, he takes the opportunity to try and frame Tristan as the aggressor, implying that she got aggressive with Aiden and prompting him to push her. Knowing the truth, that claim is nothing but sociopathic, and his clear lack of emotion or even apprehension is chilling to see. He need beat up bad. Like, whoever whoever is around him, he needs beat up bad. Did you have sex? When his parents finally pressed him for his side of the story, Aiden gave them a slight variant of what he told the police, claiming that Tristan had no intentions of going home that night. 
Oh, According to wow. him, she was looking for someone to go home with and decided to get a ride with her dealer. But his body language is far from convincing, again offering the information through a bored, disinterested mumble. Why the dad trying to be like, I oh, don't know, he's, he's, he's coming off soft. Why is he like trying to be like, like, so soft in the situation? That's as best as I can put it. Like, I don't really get why he's not really pressing him when as much Aiden's as the mom When parents is. encouraged their son to say nothing until his attorney arrived, police raided their home. Come when on, they man. entered Aiden's room, they discovered a treasure trove of smoking gun evidence. Uh they found an empty knife sheath in his drawer, allegedly uh. poker. Stuffed next to his dresser, they found a pair of wet Nike shoes with blood on them, mm. matching the outfit Aiden wore in the surveillance footage. And stuffed under the dresser, authorities found a blooded t-shirt and a pair of wet blue denim jeans, which matched the outfit Aiden wore that day. But mm. as if that wasn't enough, Authorities also found that the drain in the bathroom sink had traces of- You didn't even get rid of any of the evidence. You just kept it in your room. Kids being dumb. Of blood and Kids dirt. being dumb. And among his belongings, an odd notebook contained drawings of a violent and satanic nature. There was no question. Authorities quickly arrested Aiden on a charge of second degree murder upping it hmm. to first degree after the extent of Tristan's wounds became clear. Yep. Then, out of the blue, Aiden's mother, Crystal, was arrested on a warrant. Wait, Smith what? Smith is seen cleaning her son's bloody jeans. When officers went into the home, they found a pair of wet jeans in Fuchi's bedroom. How the we fuck did they get the in-home CCTV footage? How? Why do y'all have a CCTV in your home in the first place? Oh my God. Earlier this summer, the jeans and a drain in a bathroom tested positive for blood. Thanks to a surveillance video within the home, Crystal had been caught on tape washing Aiden's bloodied blue jeans in the sink. Authorities quickly charged her with tampering with crucial case evidence and advising her son to lie about what he wore the night of the murder. She has pleaded not guilty to both of these allegations. In September 2021, Aiden was brought into a room at the Duval County Jail to follow the process of his pre-trial hearing. But everyone viewed his behavior as erratic, if not highly concerning. And why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, brother, trying to be fucking crazy. Stop showing off. Real ship. Hope somebody beat you up. I'm so, oh, this is a, this is he's like 14, Andy. My fault, my fault, my fault. From the moment he enters the room, Aiden seems dazed and confused. He's just but trying it all to gets act. a little more unusual when he begins mumbling about demons taking his soul. Nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't hate you, Why is he my keeping soul. the phone up to his my ear soul. though? My oh my god, bro, this is corny. I'm about to cut this off. Like, I don't wanna, like, come on. Aiden truly believed demons were attacking him. But no, this is likely didn't. Aiden's last ditched effort to secure a way out of prison. Yeah. The insanity plea has long been a go to Apologies. solution for killers and psychopaths. And faking a demonic possession works, except when it doesn't. Aiden would eventually go to trial for his crimes, and the judge declaring that his alleged demonic possession would not be considered. Unsurprisingly, that seemed to help Aiden overcome the demonic attacks he was allegedly suffering beforehand. The old, emotionless personality his <laughs> classmates warned of he returned, the shit. with Aiden barely reacting to the gruesome details of his crimes. 
Throughout the trial, Aidan was seen to be following the orders given to him by his attorney, barely saying a word except when he specifically had to. But that doesn't mean his performance was perfect or polished. At one it point, Aidan was caught on camera laughing at something his attorney wrote on a piece of paper, undermining any apology he had made to Tristan's family. But that happiness didn't last long. When Aidan's grandmother took to the stand, her tearful testimony seemed to affect Aidan more than any other. As she tearfully confessed that the boy in front of her was not the grandson she had helped raise, Aidan was genuinely affected by the comments. Mm. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Uh, Graham, I'm telling you. Wow, this is so hard. This marks the only instance in the entire trial that Aidan was shown to exhibit some kind of genuine, non-contrived emotion. And like a mm. true psychopath. The grandma pulled that emotion. <laughs> yes, sir. It was only because it affected him. Tristan's yep. family's pain had elicited no expression from him for the duration of the trial. But see the way that he responds when his grandmother fears she'll never see him again. And I, I know we're a very large Christian family, and uh, we pray all the time. And I just hope you consider a little bit. And please don't take him out of our lives forever. Uh, I know that I've died and not be able to spend time with him sometime before I go. At this moment, it appears that Hayden had finally realized the scale of He's the crying. consequences of his actions. Nobody gives a fuck if you're crying. You told you stabbed this girl 114 times. Her parents are literally never going to be able to talk, see, touch, hear her again ever for as long as they live. That's fucked up what you did, bro. You're going to jail, and I'm honestly. I don't see I don't see why people like this go to jail like <laughs> but like they need to quit you know what I mean like the judge eventually decided that Aiden's crime which lacked any motive and was done purely to cause harm to another human was worthy of life in prison and Aiden unsurprisingly didn't seem phased by that news whatsoever we'll go big belly fuck Mr. Fucci having entered a plea of Guilty to the crime of first degree murder, I adjudicate you guilty of the premeditated first degree murder of Tristan Bailey. I sentence you to life in prison. Because of your age, you are eligible for a review of the sentence in 25 years. Despite his public apologies to Tristan's family throughout the trial and after, Aidan doesn't seem to register what the sentence meant. In his mind, it likely doesn't mean anything. He always said he wanted to feel what it would be like to kill, and he achieved that. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. I'm, I'm pissed off right now. I can't even lie. I'm pissed off right now. I can't even lie, dog. Life in prison, like, yeah. He's not going to get out, but damn, he still get to eat, sleep, breathe, laugh. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.